What's up guys, Mikkel here, and in this video, I wanna share with you some information that I just came across that really does make me think it might be impossible for the SEC to win this case. Guys, as this case is dragged on, the evidence has continued to go against the SEC. The more things we have learned, the more things we have found, really just shows that what was going on at the SEC when Ethereum got a free pass and XRP got this lawsuit, it really just showed us that there was absolutely no legal standard for why this took place, and it was really just all closed room deals going on behind the scenes. Guys, in this video, I want to show you one of the most outrageous things I have seen yet because it's going to make you so confident that when this case is said and done, there is no way that XRP could be given a different legal status in Ethereum. At the end of this video, I also want to show you guys a key reason we're currently going through this downturn in the market. Guys, I want to offer you guys a different perspective, show you something not a lot of people are talking about because I really do think this is one of the biggest reasons we are currently seeing the prices of many cryptocurrency slump. Guys, make sure to stick around till the end of the video to see that. I think you are definitely going to want to hear it. Like always, guys, if you're new to this channel or come here all the time, please take a second to hit the like and subscribe button down below. It goes such a long way in helping this channel grow, and it really does mean so much to me. If you guys are ever looking for a good place to buy some XRP, even if you live in the United States, make sure to check out the link in the description below. With that said, though, let's jump right into it, and I hope you guys enjoy the content. <laughs> Real quick guys, Moomoo is slowly becoming one of my favorite places to buy and sell stocks. Moomoo is a regulated exchange with a great interface. If you sign up with Moomoo right now using the link in the description of this video and deposit only $1, you will get 7 free stocks. Each one of these stocks could be worth up to $3,000, so guys make sure to check that out if you want some free stocks. So guys, let's jump into the video and I wanted to start off by quickly talking about the Hester Purse interview that happened the other day because something very interesting actually just happened in regards to this interview. Now when I first saw this interview, I was very critical of Hester Purse. I thought Tony did a great job interviewing her. But but Hester just continues to dodge every single question asked of her. We saw multiple different lawyers come out and say there is no reason that Hester can't answer most of the questions Tony was asking her in this interview. It's simply that she is refusing to answer these questions. Now, this is really annoying because the SEC has created so much confusion in this industry. The least they could do is answer some simple questions. Yet Hester Purse continues to dodge every single question asked of her. Although I was pretty cold on this interview at first, what I have noticed is there are actually was a lot of people in Congress and the Senate actually watching this interview and that is a great sign because guys this exposes the fact that most of these people in our government know all about the Ethereum free pass. They know all about what happened to XRP, and they know, most importantly, that we know how messed up it is. They know they are not going to get away with what happened, and that is a great sign. Representative Bill Hazanga actually responded directly to this interview from Tony from the Thinking Crypto channel, and he said, I agree with Hester Peirce. Regulation of digital assets should not be a partisan issue. Congress needs to provide a regulatory framework that is workable and protects investors. Gary Gensler and the SEC should not be regulation by enforcement to craft policy or make deals. This is a huge statement by Rip Bill Hazanga, and guys, this is a great sign because you can see at the end of this tweet where he put the part that said, or make deals. Guys, when he says this, he is directly talking about the Ethereum free pass. The fact that people like Bill Hazanga and other people in Congress understand that there is no legal difference between Ethereum and XRP is a great sign because in my opinion, it makes it absolutely impossible for the current regulatory ambiguity we're currently in to stick. What these people are going to understand is that what we are dealing with right now in the cryptocurrency industry simply does not make any sense and what they are slowly figuring out is the reason why it doesn't make sense. It's not because there is some legal difference between XRP and Ethereum, it's because the SEC made deals and that's why the regulations we're dealing with right now are nothing short of a complete mess. So guys, I want to move on now and show you something that I really do believe is going to be explosive in this current Ripple SEC case. One of the most important things for Ripple to do in this case is prove to the court that there is no legal difference between Ethereum and XRP. 
The SEC regulated the cryptocurrency market in the most convoluted way possible because they know they had zero logic for why they were calling Ethereum a non-security and something like XRP a security. The SEC was hoping the public would blindly believe them, they were hoping we'd listen to everything they said and not actually look into how they came to these conclusions. Well guys, the more we look into how the SEC came across these conclusions, the more it looks like a total pile of BS. Take a look at this, because what this is going to show you, and I could not believe this when I first read it, this is going to show you that the creator of Ethereum himself literally does not think XRP is a security. Guys, listen to that. The project that the SEC gave a free pass, the project that the SEC said was not a security, even that project does not think XRP is a security. Guys, it is so important to understand how critical this is because part of the SEC's main argument against Ripple is that Ripple should have known since 2013 that XRP was clearly and obviously a security. Well guys, it looks like everyone in the blockchain industry that actually knows anything about crypto and securities law did not think XRP was a security, and this is a huge hit to the credibility of the SEC's case against Ripple. Anyway though, take a look at this. This is something Vitalik actually wrote about Ripple and XRP back in 2013. He said, altogether, what Ripple has accomplished is impressive. With Ripple, we have a way of sending, receiving, and holding any currency, not just one specifically cryptocurrency, in a decentralized way. This is Vitalik Buterin in 2013, literally saying that XRP is a decentralized blockchain and that in no way could be a security. Vitalik is literally telling us, and this was at a time when honestly, XRP was a lot more centralized. There's a lot less nodes, there's a lot less people using the network, but Vitalik is telling us even at this time point in 2013, that there is no way that XRP is a security of Ripple. He says it himself that XRP is decentralized and guys, that is such a big hit to the narrative the SEC is trying to push. The SEC is trying to push this narrative that only Bitcoin is decentralized, only Ethereum is decentralized, and every single other blockchain, every single other cryptocurrency out there is somehow centralized. Well, guys, it is so ironic that the creator of this other blockchain that the SEC seemed to give an okay, it is so ironic that the creator of that coin himself literally does not think XRP is centralized. Guys, the SEC continues to take huge hits in this case, and when I first saw this, it just reminded me of the tweet I have pinned on my Twitter that I thought was one of the biggest hits for the SEC thus far. This was actually filed directly to the Ripple SEC case by the Ripple legal team, and take a look at this. XRP was considered decentralized before Ethereum ever existed, and oh yeah, by the same law firm that later helped Ethereum get its free pass. And guys, if we take a look at this, and for me, this is one of the most damning things for the SEC to date. The law firm that worked with the SEC to literally get Ethereum its status as a non-security had already declared XRP a non-security almost five years prior. Yep, guys, that's right. The same law firm the SEC worked with to get Ethereum a free pass, the same law firm that said Ethereum was decentralized and therefore not a security, had already said the same exact thing about XRP five years prior. Guys, the SEC is trying to say that it was clear and obvious that XRP was always a security since 2013, yet everything we find literally shows that the only thing that is clear about any of this is that XRP was definitely not a security even back in 2013. Yes, the fact that the SEC is even continuing this charade with this kind of evidence coming out against them is honestly insane. You would think they would give up right now with how bad they are looking with this thing. I mean, when you see stuff like this, when you see things like what Vitalik said, guys, it just makes it so obvious that everyone in crypto who knew anything about securities law, everyone who actually looked at XRP without falling for a bunch of FUD, knew that there is no way that XRP should have any kind of different legal status in Ethereum. And guys, it looks like the SEC, unfortunately, is going to have to figure this out the hard way because this is going to come back to hit them hard in the Ripple SEC case. Now, guys, I want to finish this video off and give you a different perspective on why we're currently seeing a downturn in the cryptocurrency market. I see a lot of different people 
on Twitter putting out different theories on why we're currently going through this downturn. At the end of the day, they're all theories. No one knows the real reason why we are seeing this negative price action, but I wanted to give you guys a more optimistic perspective. Something else to consider that is actually pretty bullish. This was tweeted out by Watcher Guru. Justin, FTX exchange revenue grew by over a thousand percent to 1.2 billion in 2021, CNBC reports. And what I want to point out here is that the growth we went in through in the cryptocurrency market over the last two years was extraordinary. We had so much capital flow into the cryptocurrency market. We had so many new projects get created and it was an explosion of value coming into the market. Guys, this is a very bullish sign for the long-term prospects of cryptocurrency. It shows that there's a lot of interest in this area. We saw all the smartest engineers all over the world enter this space, and we saw the revenue for the different projects, for the different companies out there, absolutely explode. Eventually, it only makes sense that this would cool off a little bit. You cannot grow a thousand percent year over year forever. And guys, it's honestly a good thing that it did cool off. The more this got out of hand, the more this exploded, the bigger issues we were going to have down the road. And guys, what we're going through right now is just a quick cooling period. Things are calming down a little bit, and it's a very volatile space. So when things calm down a little bit, honestly, it made it a little more of a crash than might happen in a more traditional market. But guys, it's just a growing pain, and it really is just a sign that this market is going to end up where we all know it will. Anyway, guys, I hope everyone has a great weekend. Thank you so much for coming. Make sure to like and subscribe if you're still here. It really does mean so much to me. And for now, Mikkel out. <laughs>